And there's one thing that uh, could be a little tricky in this radio. So here's a couple asterisks next to these two 40, 470,000 ohm resistors and these two capacitors. Uh, there, first two. Well, down here, uh, if you can read that, they're combined into a multi unit component called a couplate, which came into fashion in the 50s. What a couplate is. It's a little ceramic module where they would combine multiple components and then encase them and seal it in the little like rectangular package with some pins coming out. Uh, you're, you'd be very, very lucky to find an actual replacement in one of those. And since there is a paper capacitor inside and those are the ones that deteriorate, it should be, really be replaced. Now. They do say here, although a defective section of the couplate can sometimes be replaced by individual components, we strongly recommend replacing the entire couplate. Again, that'd be great if I could find one. I don't have one. I don't think I'm going to find one. And if I did, it would cost more than the radio most, most likely. So uh, I'll probably try making my own. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not sure what it looks like. But usually they're like a little square, almost like a little circuit board with the parts placed on it, soldered together, then like encased like an epoxy, I suppose today's would be the modern equivalent. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to try doing. So I think it's about time to open up this radio and see what's inside. To open it up, pull off the knobs. Sometimes they can be pretty tight. In this case they are. So, oh, I can get this one off. Okay. And the other one. Probably this too. Oh, I'll have to put the camera down for that. Um, and then I'll remove these two screws on top. And I guess there's none below, so it should just slide out. Hang on, and I'll show you what's inside. Well, it's a little bit trickier to take apart than I thought. Those two screws in the back simply. Uh, loosen up this back cover. It's made of uh, some press board. Well, that's where the loop antenna is, and it's attached by these two wires. You, you want to be careful uh, not to break those off. But that doesn't do anything to, to loosen up the radio. Apparently, that's attached by screw over here and a screw over here. So I need to grab a flat, bit, a flat blade screwdriver and uh, try to take those off. All right, I got that stubborn knob off and was able to get the radio open. When I'm taking these apart, I keep a plastic tub on hand to put all the parts in because the last thing you want to do is lose any of these screws or knobs. Now, the first thing I noticed was the speaker is really disgusting. <laughs> uh, this must have been torn up bad at some point in the past and somebody repaired it with mucilage, rubber cement, RTV silicone, not quite sure. Uh, I mean, it's here, it's, it seems to be sound, but uh, if I ever come across a replacement speaker, I'd really like to replace it with a better one. Okay, uh, let's see, here's the five tubes. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's a little dirty, a few dead daddy long legs, but otherwise looks to be pretty intact. Underneath, well... In addition to that speaker, somebody replaced one of the capacitors and more dead spiders. Uh, left a few solder blobs in here too. Uh, other capacitors seem to be original though, like this guy, this guy, possibly this one. And here's the couplet I was talking about, where it's the ceramic little postage stamp size gizmo with four leads coming out. Um, the reason they would use this is um, for critical circuitry to put it inside there to protect it from the elements and also for temperature stabilization uh, because this whole piece of ceramic would heat up very evenly and components like especially resistors they are affected by temperature so having them on this common substrate means they all track with, as, t as the temperature changes. All right, so here we go. You know, there's the old capacitors and so on. Now I know it's tempting when you get something like this to just plug in and turn it on, but what's most likely to happen is these capacitors would literally explode on you. 
which could very well take out the rectifier tube and maybe some of the other tubes and you'd be very unhappy so uh, at the very least use a dim bulb tester but even beyond that in a radio this simple I wouldn't even bother because you know you're going to be replacing the capacitors anyways so open it up, expect, inspect it cosmetically, because who knows what might be going on inside. You know, somebody might have started to repair it and gave up and there's wires shorted out inside, or you know, maybe parts have already exploded, who knows. So just take your time, be patient with it. Now, all right, so we know what parts we need. So I, I have to, I'm in my office right now. I live in my home office and I have a big uh, whiteboard on the wall and that's where I keep track of things I need to order. So up on top here I've got a few parts I need to properly finish the restoration on that Sentinel TV I've been working on. And then here's the parts for this set. Most of these resistors I have on hand but there are a few like just 33 ohm 1 watt I'm going to need to order and uh, a few of these capacitors I need to order as well but the rest I have on hand. Now the resistors you want to pay attention to the wattage. If it's a one watt don't try to use a half watt it'll burn out on you. Using a one watt in place of a half watt generally that's fine. Capacitors now this is kind of in a transition period where they were going from the old numbering system which was all whole values like 30 and 50 microfarad to the modern system where we don't use 30 we use 33 we don't use 50 we use 47 or go up to the or round up and go to 56. 0.18 that's that's still made today 0.1 that's fine 0 0.05 0 0.02 they're not standard but i know of at least one place we can get them the voltage on the capacitors is important um Generally, it's a good idea to go up in value. I should say it's always a good value. It's always a good idea to go up in value as long as it will physically fit where it needs to go. Like, you know, if it's 150 and you get like a 600 volt cap, it might be quite a bit larger physically and it might not fit underneath the uh, chassis. But at the very least, get the same value. For instance, for, and especially the electrolytics, because these are um, going to be filtering the main line voltage. 150 I think is a bit low. I'm going to go for 250 on these. The paper caps, that's generally fine because this radio is only going to be running on probably like a 150 or so volts anyway, so 200 to 400 should be fine there. But typically the places I order parts from for radios, they're all 630 volt caps. And why not? I mean, if you get them that high, you don't even have to think about it. You can just reach into your parts drawers and you're always going to be covered. Now, as far as where, oh, and here's the uh, parts for the cup plate that I isolated down here, so, you know, because those might be a little bit trickier to uh, uh, put together. 